Hi, my name is John Levy. I'm the CEO of SEEK. SEEK stands for Scalable Energy Efficient Quantum Computing. And I'm really pleased to be able to be speaking to you today regarding quantum technologies for, quant for climate action. Uh, climate is a really important issue for us, and we think it's really uh, central to, uh, to our mission. In fact, um, SEEK stands for Scalable Energy Efficient Quantum Computing, so you can see it's even built into our name. Classical computers, the kinds of computers that we use in everyday life, are built around binary digits, essentially on-off switches like a light switch or a transistor that's contained within microprocessors. And that's terrific for you know, most of what we do. But as we're reminded by Richard Feynman, nature itself, our, us, people, the planet, the systems that we, that we work with, animals, plant life, et cetera, if we think about chemistry and pharmaceuticals, all of these things aren't governed by uh, classical laws. They're, they're dominated by quantum mechanical rules. And Richard Feynman reminds us that if we want to really try to understand the world that we're in, we need to build quantum mechanical systems. And that's exactly what quantum computers do. They're built around quantum bits, qubits, which if we think about them are like um, artificial atoms. So what we're doing is we're building artificial atoms to represent real atoms <clears throat> in the world and so that we can make better um, simulations of the world that we live in. And we can use that for tremendous um, applications in the quantum domain, uh, things that are frankly really unavailable to us in classical computing, like battery technology and developing new uh, catalysts uh, from you know, chemical models or carbon capture or even power grid optimization. So where we are in the world of quantum computing from an application perspective is that uh, companies like Google have been able to demonstrate that uh, even in a very limited way, that you can run uh, certain algorithms on a quantum computer that are unavailable to you on a classical computer, so-called quantum supremacy. And when they ran that experiment, there was, you know, kind of, this was the front page of the New York Times, it was big news. But it wasn't until about a year later that, that NASA, which was um, Google's partner, uh, showed the idea that, uh, that it wasn't just around the ability to run a new algorithm that was useful, but it was the fact that you could run this algorithm and they took a, a different algorithm and ran it on, on the Summit computer, which is at the time I think was the most powerful supercomputer in the world, one of their own supercomputers, and then a quantum processing unit at Google, and they could run it in a fraction of the time and a tiny fraction of the energy cost. And if we think about the fact that data centers today um, use somewhere between three and 5% of all the world's electricity, and that that number is growing dramatically, then we can think about the importance of trying to think about building quantum data centers that are much, much more energy efficient, given also the immense power, that computational power that they have. So here's an example of a next generation or a near term technology a uh, thousand qubit quantum computer. Just to give you a feel for it, the most advanced computers in the world today have somewhere between 50 and let's say 100 qubits. So the idea of building a thousand qubit quantum computer, particularly one, you know, these quantum computers scale um, exponentially, not linearly, um, presents a very, very powerful image. Um, and, and if we think about trying to scale that to data center levels, um, it would cost about $14 million to build one of these. And if we then said, let's scale that up to something that would be more like a million qubits in a data center, it would take two square blocks of, of New York City real estate uh, and uh, in order to do that, or two floors on one block, either way, how you want to look at it. Um, and, and based on the calculations that we've done, um, it looks like it would cost about $5 billion to build and it would consume about 150 megawatts of power, way more than uh, even the, the largest of the hyperscale data centers today, and something that, I don't know, would maybe be something deliverable by, uh, by a, nuclear, a small nuclear power plant. So clearly, this is not the, the model that we're looking to scale quantum computers to be able to solve our climate problems. In fact, we're sort of creating a new climate problem. 
So if we go back and think about what, where we are in the world of quantum computing, it reminds me very much of where we were, at least metaphorically, at the very outset of building classical computers. So this is, on the left side is the ENIAC computer. Uh, that was built at the uh, University of Pennsylvania in 1946, and it was an incredibly error-prone computer. Um, but most importantly, it was never going to scale um, because it was a tube-based system, and it took the development of uh, the transistor, the integrated circuit, the microprocessor, before you could begin to scale it into something that became kind of useful. And I would argue that in some respect, that's exactly the state, uh, the state of the art of quantum computing in 2022. Um, so, so now we know we can build quantum computers. The real question is, can we scale them and can we scale them in kind of a responsible um, and, and, and frankly, um, you know, climate friendly sort of way. So, so here we are. And it's, you know, as I say in this particular chart, it's not just about scaling qubits. It's about scaling full quantum systems because the real power of all this um, comes in all the racks of uh, room temperature electronics, uh, uh, you know, cabling. There's lots of uh, of latency built into the system. You signals have to go from from negative uh, 460 degrees Fahrenheit around 20 millikelvin up to room temperature and back again. Uh, there's there's lots of noise. There's lots of error. So um, what we think about about scaling systems is to say, let's see if we can find a way to convert all of this complexity that's using tremendous amounts of power into a series of specialty chips, single flux quantum chips, the kind that we built at Seq. These are much, much faster than CMOS chips. Uh, they're about 10x faster than the kinds of chips we have in our convention, in our regular computers today, even in our supercomputers. Um, and they operate at three to five orders of magnitude lower power. So it means that we can actually have um, conventional classical electronics coexist with qubits in a very, very cold environment where qubits need to operate in superconductive mode. So here's an example of what a full stack, entirely chip-based architecture would look like for building a scalable quantum computer. And we believe that this kind of design um, can easily scale to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, of qubits all connected in the same dilution refrigerator, all operating in either quantum or digital mode, and that we can do it on a cost-effective basis. So if we go back and think about what the ENIAC looked like compared to the quantum, the, the Sycamore quantum computer, say, at Google, here's an example of state-of-the-art quantum computer today and what a scaled version of a quantum computer could look like that could be equivalent to a quantum data center. Well, you know, what's remarkable about that isn't just that we're building um, a scaled system, but that we believe that we can operate this at around 65 kilowatts of power, not 150 megawatts of power. And there, that's really the, the, the kind of message that we want to deliver today is that we can deliver the power of a quantum computer to work on really important quantum applications that, that can affect uh, the climate in a really positive way. And we can do it by building really responsible, super energy efficient quantum data centers um, built on an entirely chip-based architecture that we're building here at Seq. And with that, I thank you and look forward to uh, hearing more talks uh, in, you know, in preparation for, for COP27. Thanks very much.